Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 15th, 2015. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an exciting celestial week we have. We have the very last exact conversation between Uranus and Pluto taking place. We also have a solar eclipse happening at the very last degree and the very last moment of the zodiac as well as the equinox as well as the start of a new astrological year so lots of amazing things to talk about the uranus pluto square what i've been calling a generation defining conversation between uranus and pluto has been speaking to us since 2012 we started feeling it even before but this particular conversation has symbolized um, a larger change taking place within all of us as a collective. On the one hand, this is speaking to the revolutionary spirit that has been sweeping the world. Um, but on the other hand, I have been understanding this and looking at this as the refusal to wait for permission to do what you want to do with your life and to experience a sense of self, to experience that you are living your life truly and honestly on your own terms, decided by you and not by anyone else, and not waiting for a gatekeeper to allow you to do what it is that ultimately you want to do, especially when you can do it right where you are. And I think this has been the part of the larger lesson that's been taking place here. In particular, I think about ever since 2012, we've had this exploding phenomenon taking place of empires everywhere, these mini empires springing up. and. I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, you certainly have some familiarity with this. There are a lot of people online, started their own companies, utilized YouTube as part of this, and you see them, you go to their websites and they're writing books and they're doing all kinds of things on their own, on their own terms, and sharing who it is that they are uh, and they authentically have to give. And this is really inspiring for a lot of people out there. And it isn't just in astrology, of course it's in astrology, but we see this across the board, no matter what you're into, no matter what you really like doing, people have been finding a way to do that in a way that resonates as right with them, to do their own thing, if you will. And so this is one way that this conversation has also been speaking, but I think ultimately, as I look at this conversation, this has been about defining what freedom is for you without excuses and trusting that path, trusting what it is that you want to do. Some people have been able to embrace that lesson with greater ease than others, but regardless, now with this last exact moment, the lessons that have been inspired for all of us are going to reach a conclusion of sorts. Now, these of course are lessons of a lifetime and these planets will separate. They won't have a conversation like this again for many years, many decades to come. However, there are symbols in the sky that are constantly encouraging us to be who it is that we are meant to be, to fulfill our potential. So this particular way that the universe has been symbolizing that we've been encouraged to learn this is now going to start to come to a close. So some tension should ease around the world, planetarily, yes, collectively, yes, but also personally as well. I think a lot of people are going to feel like um, a greater ease as they step into the lives that they've created and where it is that you have felt resistance, that there have been powers at play keeping you from getting what you want, you should find that ease somewhat as well. So this is really encouraging, makes it a very big astrological week, certainly. What we also have happening this week is an eclipse. It's a solar eclipse and an eclipse is happening at the very, very end of the sign of Pisces, at the very last degree, the sky, the zodiac, is divided into 360 degrees. 12 signs, each sign gets 30 degrees. And it is uh, the 29th degree of Pisces that is the very, very end of this whole astrological cycle, the entire zodiac, and it is zero degrees of Aries. When the sun crosses that point, that marks the equinox moment and that marks the first day of spring the first day of the sign of aries uh, and the start of an astrological new year and so we're having this eclipse take place it's a new moon solar eclipse so it suggests to me that it is within a bright beginning that we understand what we no longer are carrying into our future I personally really love eclipses. Eclipses to me are like 20 times more powerful than your normal new moon. 
sometimes even more if we've got some other planets uh, involved in it, uh, especially if Uranus is involved, it can be up to 50 times more powerful. But eclipses really are a chance to realign yourself with a higher vision for your life. It's when fate becomes undeniable. And how you experience an eclipse depends a lot on the level of consciousness you bring to the sky. And so if you are, if you are the kind of person who um, actively seeks to learn from your life, who is a person who's pretty conscious, who can sort of feel new moons and full moons coming on, with a new moon, you know that there's a beginning about to take place. With a full moon, the truth becomes undeniable, comes like really in your face and you understand that a, tr that a change must be made now and what it is that has ended and reached its fruition. With a solar eclipse, that factor is still at play. You can still feel a new beginning coming on. However, if you really have not been paying attention, if you haven't been listening to yourself, then you probably aren't aware that this beginning is coming on and when it does come, it can really take a person by surprise. But ultimately, remember, this is about being aligned with a more loving fate, regardless of what's playing out in the immediacy. And I do believe that eclipses are good. Eclipses are good, I'm convinced of it, because they encourage us to see the truth that's been staring us in the face. They make us look at what we didn't want to look before and understand where it is that we're ready to begin again, we're ready to go down a new pathway. So I think this is gonna be a really exciting time and every sign out there should be experiencing change. What's great is that minutes after this eclipse takes place, the sun and the moon change signs. And when they change signs, as I said, it's the equinox moment. Happy equinox, everybody. <laughs> it is the equinox moment. And so it suggests, and the moon, the next sort of immediate thing the moon does is speak in supreme harmony with Saturn. So it suggests to me immediate progress begins to take place following this eclipse. The awareness will largely be one that is emotional and likely be one that shifts energy but immediately spurs us to action. But it isn't just about what we're feeling, right? It isn't just about what's going on on a level of emotion or drive or tension. But Mercury is nearby and Mercury is suggesting that we are processing information on a level of mind. We're processing information on a level of mind. And Mercury this week will be speaking with Saturn and meeting Neptune in the sky. So it looks like, you know, we're checking our assumptions and that's really gonna be key now. Are we making assumptions? Are we filling in blanks when we don't have all the information? Are we interpreting things accurately? That's gonna be part of the question that's gonna be coming up and that's a good question. That is absolutely a good question because it ensures that we are interacting with our world from a place of awareness. And what I really like about this, it's not necessarily easy. And given that Mercury and Saturn are speaking, it looks like some of us out there are gonna be having a conversation that feels less than easy. But having said that, it does look like whatever is difficult about the moment, however it is that we're interpreting things, it really is gonna be by talking things out that we come to a greater understanding of what's really going on and faith is restored. Mercury will meet Neptune this week, later this week after Mercury speaks with Saturn, faith will be restored. Now here's what's really interesting about what Mercury's doing as well. There is a, a longer term trend that is really gonna kick in once we get into next year. And this has to do with Saturn speaking with Neptune. So Saturn will be having a rare conversation with Neptune. We will start feeling this before the year is out actually. So before the year is over in the later part of this year, we're gonna start feeling this conversation and this conversation um, is also in its own way kind of generation defining, has a lot of different implications um, for us collectively, certainly. Um, it has to do with a uh, desire to understand what it is that's creating a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, when I look at this, I see an element playing out here that has to do with, let's come up with cures. Uh, for some viruses, some health problems. And I think that right now we're having this debate, this sort of cultural debate, 
bit about vaccines, and this is very much fitting this symbol of Saturn squaring Neptune. And so I do think this week we will hear more along those lines of that debate, and we will have a, a little glimpse into some of the larger issues that we are going to be playing out more and more collectively as uh, we move further into the year and into next year as well, specifically. Interestingly as well, I for one, I do think, I, I recently came across uh, an article, it got a little bit of uh, attention, that had to do with a new cream that dissolves tattoos and it's in development right now. In the next two years it should be available. Uh, this is what it said. <laughs> but I thought, isn't this so fitting with Saturn and Neptune? Because Neptune dissolves, Neptune dissolves. Um, Saturn desires the permanent as well. And so there's this interesting understanding between what is permanent might not actually be permanent and how we can actually work towards that being a good thing for some people. <laughs> for some people, I'm sure that's going to be a controversial thing. But I do think that these are the types we'll see uh, medical promises that may or may not manifest. We'll be seeing a lot of talk and a lot of efforts made uh, towards sort of eradicating a lot of different things. So with Mercury this week, I do think that this particular conversation is going to give us insight into the conversations that are going to go into overdrive a little bit later on this year and especially once we get into next year as well. So exciting things taking place uh, at this time. Also this week, Venus will be moving into the sign of Taurus. Venus will be moving into the sign of Taurus. Venus will be coming home to Taurus. Uh, this to me speaks to enjoying the incarnation is really what it comes down to, enjoying the experience of being a human being. That's what I really love about this particular conversation and understanding that we are worthy of whatever it is that we deem the best that life can offer. That's going to be part of the larger lesson. Now, as we progress a little bit later in the month, and I'll be here to talk about it then, uh, next week we are going to have... Venus speaking in supreme harmony with Pluto when these lessons are really going to go through the roof. Again, I'll talk about it then, but I think that this is really the time to enjoy just being who you are, enjoying the five senses, enjoying good food, enjoying good music, enjoying singing, enjoying dancing. These are all correlated to this energy. And so what a great vibe to be a connoisseur or to discover um, sort of a passion for um, sort of the finer things as well. So really good time to uh, sort of splurge and buy that really, really good chocolate. <laughs> buy, uh, if you're into it, if you're into wine, buy really good wine. This is the time to splurge and do that. You're likely to enjoy it that much more. And uh, finally, I do want to say, as I started out, I already talked about a little bit, we are going to have the equinox moment. Happy equinox once again. But at the last day of the week, it is going to be uh, the 21st of March. And the 21st of March is International Astrology Day. So a very big, happy International Astrology Day to everybody out there. Um, it's not a celestial. It is connected to a celestial phenomenon because it is connected to the equinox. And as I said, the start of the astrological year. But of course, it's something that uh, sort of reminds us that there is uh, this beautiful myth, this dance that is playing out, and it helps the astrology community to really come together. There are going to be events, I know, all over the world, and so if you have an event planned or you know of an International Astrology Day event planned, please do share it with me. Come on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, my website, NadiaShaw.com, and I'll be sure to forward that message on to other people so that they can celebrate as well. And I really wanted to mention this because Astrology has been really, really good to me. Astrology has, uh, it means so much to me just to be an astrologer, to have this practice. And um, I don't want to get choked up or anything right now, but I think about how astrology has helped me ever since I was a child um, and helped me to remember that there is a place for me in the universe. So I want to say to you, Thank you. Thank you for being here. And in some way, your astrological journey, no matter where you are in it, has brought you here to this moment to celebrate astrology with me. I hope that you do find a way to attend something to connect with others in the community if you are so inclined. 
but really you being here it means so much to me personally because not only is astrology part of my spiritual practice but sharing astrology and being able to share astrology because you are here also becomes a part of my spiritual practice as well and i thank you so much for that it is an absolute privilege to have this moment with you week after week and in the monthly horoscopes and in all the other videos i do so thank you so much for that i really hope that you enjoy international astrology day and do something some symbolic small thing uh, to just and again i know i will to thank all the amazing astrologers who came before me every single person who practices astrology and whoever practiced astrology whether we know their names or not whether they wrote books or not and especially who did so in times when the world was really hostile to astrology they ensured that it survived to this day they ensured oh my god i don't want to get choked up i promised myself i wouldn't but I think about how many people have sacrificed so that I could have this moment, so that I could have this practice, and I feel so filled with gratitude. So thank you so much to all those astrologers before, and when you practice astrology or when you consume astrology, when you watch these videos, you are ensuring that this practice continues for so many people, um, and you ensure that in some way this practice stays strong, and it is... Uh, it is such a gift for me personally and also uh, I'm sure for the collective as well. So thank you so much for watching. Please do keep your comments coming. I can't believe I got a little choked up there, but thank you so much for allowing me to do that and creating this safe space. Um, I love your comments. I love your interactions. Please do keep them coming. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, my website, NadiaShaw.com. Um, of course, if you have questions that are a little bit more personal, uh, looking at your particular chart um, that have to do with your life, please do consider a personalized horoscope where I can do just that. Look at your chart and create an individual video that is specially and only for you. And thank you again for being here, for celebrating the sky, celebrating your lives with me and you know everything I do is to affirm in the universe that the universe is wise and loving. The universe is wise and loving. I believe it absolutely with, if I believe anything, that is what I believe. And I've walked it and I've seen it in my own life and so many other lives. And I hope that these videos in some way affirm that truth in your life as well. So how all this, I'm gonna take a bit of a breather. <laughs> I'm gonna cut, but how all this speaks to you and your sign is coming up right now. Hello, fabulous Aries. This week we have this eclipse happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with what you'd rather not show people and what maybe you're not even admitting to yourself. It's a very behind the scenes kind of karmic and also an element here of what is leaving. So it does represent a real shift in energy. And as I spoke about in the monthly horoscopes, it's all part of the really big beginnings that are coming up for you next month. So this month, allowing energy to shift so that even bigger things can launch next month. But that's not all, of course. What we also have happening, which is especially significant for you, is the last conversation between Pluto and Aries. The very last exact conversation taking place between these two planets is such a beautiful thing for you especially, and it should create an element of calmness after this week is done. I mean, more or less, you still have Uranus in your sign. So over the course of this decade, you're still going through a transformation of sorts, those of you born right around the 5th of April, uh, give or take three days on either side, are going to experience this last eclipse that much more significantly. But all Aries out there should be feeling this week uh, as an important one, uh, one where a lot of things changed for the better, a uh, one where they felt a sense of finally getting a lesson that has been approaching them and they got to demonstrate that they got that lesson at that. So wherever it is that life has been asking you to free yourself, but also telling you to do it in a way that's responsible and that's conscious and that's aware, you will understand what's going on there, the whole dynamic, and what is the most kind and loving action to take, especially where it comes to what needs to change within you in order to experience the type of breakthroughs that you truly desire. Focus on you, allow the change to set in, and you will be utilizing this week so well in order to take full advantage of the really wonderful things and the wonderful new beginnings coming up for you next month. 
Hello, fabulous Taurus. This week, your ruling planet Venus enters your sign. Venus enters your sign. Now, this is lovely for you. This is so beautiful for you because it is as if a part of you is feeling more at home. A part of you comes home within yourself and you're able to bring forward the things within yourself that you like and see that rewarded, see a sense of affirmation for that. So when we have Venus, just in general, when Venus is in your sign, in any one sign, people of that sign, uh, they get more attractive, more people are drawn to them. It's a really good vibe to be carrying. Uh, they're seen as more charming, they're seen as more beautiful. They're able to appreciate and enjoy their own beauty that much more. For you, this becomes like 10 times more significant because it is your ruling planet. And so this particular week begins a process. Over the next couple of weeks, you're gonna be experiencing Venus moving through your sign this is certainly going to help you tremendously in so many ways to appreciate just what it is that you're bringing that is good to every area of your life, whether it's to your relationship, whether it's to your employer. And more importantly, this is going to allow you to feel the love. You really are loved. You really are appreciated. You may not always be totally aware of it, but that affirmation, that love is certainly there. And you are sort of prepping yourself now for experiencing a really loving moment coming up next week. And I will be here to talk about it then, but next week is just so nice for you. This week is social. There's an element there of friends and friends coming up to need your attention, to get your feedback. Um, and also for you creating an agreement with a friend that should help you tremendously, that feels like a, a karmic pact, if you will. And it looks very affirming for you as well. So let yourself be loved trust that you are worthy to receive good things and it's very likely that as a result through a friendship through sort of a friend acting as a conduit good things certainly do find you now hello fabulous gemini this week we have got an eclipse happening at the very top of your sky at the very top of your chart so when an eclipse happens here it's changes in career it's changes in your career path it's change in the way you understand the purpose of your life and the direction that you are going in and it does look like the results of your um, insights the results of the events that are set to transpire this week really help you to create a greater stability in your life, especially with a partner or a partnership. And so it does look like, given that your ruling planet also speaking with Saturn in your opposite sign, speaking or meeting Neptune rather as well, I look at all this and it suggests to me that um, there are certain breakthroughs coming up, differences and understandings in the way in which you're wanting and where it is that you're wanting to accomplish something that matters to you. It's very likely that this understanding and these changes are going to be facilitated by a partner in some way. Uh, and I got to say this, okay, for some out there, not everyone, but for a few uh, Geminis out there, it may be a, sort of a difficult conversation that you have with a partner that you may or may not be perceiving accurately that makes you like sort of say, you know what, I don't need to depend on you. <laughs> I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do something that matters to me and I'm gonna make my own way and I don't need you. And that's not really an accurate picture, but that's okay uh, because it does sort of inspire you to have a breakthrough of sorts that ends up being a really positive thing. Before we get to the end of the week, there is resolution. You do come to understand that there was likely a misunderstanding there of some sort or a need to just connect with each other more honestly. So a small number of Geminis likely to see a scenario uh, reminiscent or somewhat like that this week. But I do think that for a lot of Geminis out there, it is a week where you're thinking big picture and this week does promise favor with higher ups even if it doesn't seem that way at first even if it's difficult to approach them even if it's difficult to ask for that promotion there is ultimately a really inspiring moment that lets you know that you're on the right track towards greater accomplishment as well those of you who are not so work-minded uh, this again has to do with life purpose what goals are worth pursuing what goals are worth achieving and that in turn um, really allows you clarity to be feel like you can begin a path there's a beginning of sorts here but begin a path that resonates as right for you as exactly what it is you're meant to do at this point in your life 
Hello, Fabulous Cancer. This week we have got eclipse taking place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with stepping out onto the more of the world and taking life on as an adventure. Now, in a very kind of literal, kind of immediate way, this can be the opportunity to travel coming up out of nowhere, whether it's uh, for work or otherwise. Uh, but really, the opportunity should just sort of pop up out of nowhere. It's likely to be career related, okay? So it's likely to be connected to uh, money as well. And so when that opportunity comes, you can certainly embrace it if it calls to you, but it does look like it creates um, a really good experience for you that ultimately will create more and more opportunity and progress for you for a very long time to come. I also do think that this week, considering that um, not only is there activity happening in this adventurous part of the sky at that, but that a lot of it, a lot of the insights, the inspirations, um, the beginnings, the sense of adventure, it all sort of fits in with a new vision that's emerging for you as to what you really want to do, what you really believe you're meant to do, what it is that you want to pursue with all your heart and all your spirit. And with those new insights, with those new understandings will come a stronger plan forward, an action plan forward. But as I said, there is a financial element to this, the money, element looks supportive to all the things that are happening this week as well. Keep in mind also, as I said in the introduction, it's the last exact conversation between um, Uranus and Pluto, Pluto in your opposite sign. And so it's very likely that some Cancerians out there experiencing changes in the realm of relationships is sort of the last bit of uh, a really tough spot, if you will. But it has gotten you honest about where you've been in love, where you are now, and where it is that you are going. So this is going to provide that opportunity for you to sort of allow the final pieces to set in and to understand how it is that you are where you are and where it is that you want to go forward from here. So a strong week all around, lots of progress on offer and lots of clarity into who you are and what you really believe, which ultimately shapes so many of your choices, not only now, but for a long time to come. Hello, Fabulous Leo. This week we have got an eclipse taking place, a solar new moon eclipse. So it directly involves the sun, your ruling luminary. So we've got this eclipse taking place in a part of the sky for you that is financial, that has to do with what astrologers call other people's money, grants, loans, bursaries, insurance, payments, benefits, tax returns, inheritances, commission payments as well. It's that type of money. And when I see an eclipse taking place, Place like this that immediately goes on not only to change signs into a supremely harmonious position for you but also speaks in supreme harmony with Saturn as well also in a supremely harmonious position to you right now I think that this is going to be a week that does promise developments that create greater romantic, uh, not just romantic, I was going to financial stability. Now, the reason that that romantic came out is because I wanted to say those of you who are in an established bond uh, are likely to see your partner go through a financial boon uh, as well. So that's another way that money could find you because they are more prosperous. It benefits your life as well, especially if you have some sort of a joint financial agreement, whether it's with a spouse or business partner at that, where you have joint financial agreements, you may have the other entity or other person go through their own financial boon that ends up um, working in your favor as well, creating more prosperity for you as well. Also, this is a time I got to say now you want to be a little careful with this. And I say this with a little bit of trepidation, especially because we do have Mercury speaking with Saturn early in the week uh, and then Mercury speaking with Neptune later in the week. And so both of these planets suggest maybe not getting the full picture, either seeing things much more pessimistically or much more idealistically. So you do want to watch that a little bit. But for all that, this does look like a, a good time to connect with others and consider investments, okay? So it does look like whether some news or a tip or something comes through, an intuition that you might have as well, this can be a really good time for you to consider how it is that you could actually invest your money wisely so that it creates greater prosperity for you in the big picture of your life. This week also, 
we have all this, uh, because the moon changes signs, we have the start of a new astrological year. This begins a process that is going to create more and more energy for you in the realm of adventure, in the realm of possibility. And I think that more than one Leo out there is going to try and figure out a way to connect their money and their prosperity with um, an adventure that they are planning. So whether it's you decide you want to start saving your money now so that you can take a trip later, whether it's you're figuring out how you can travel and make money at the same time, or if you're trying to figure out how you can generate income in order to go back to school, all of that looks really blessed and all of, lo all of that looks like it can come together for you very nicely now. Hello, fabulous Virgo. This week we've got your ruling planet speaking with Saturn and meeting Neptune. You add to this an eclipse in your opposite sign, which I spoke about at length in the Love Focused Horoscope for this month. Um, and it's an adventurous week. It's a week where developments are likely to take place in your partnerships of all kinds. So this can affect those, especially in terms of business relationships where you might be wondering how much this person is actually doing for you, how much are they on your side, you might have an interaction, a communication with them that doesn't sit well with you, but don't worry about that. All will be resolved before the week is over, so you need to strive not to overreact to any information that comes in and, and not to have your immediate reaction be the truth, quote unquote, the truth, because chances are you might be misinterpreting things a little bit. And again, it can be resolved. It's just about talking it out um, and knowing that as you understand it more, ultimately that can bring you closer to this other person. But of course, an eclipse in your opposite sign, a new moon eclipse at that brings a change in relationships, a change in status sometimes as well. And so this is uh, one of the most promising time frames, the beginning time frame for a lot of great developments to take place for you in the realm of love. So if you are in an established bond, this can be uh, feeling a fresh sense of what is possible for the two of you together, come around, uh, fresh possibilities that bring you closer together, that help you feel um, that this pe person matches the direction in which you're going, help you feel a greater sense of intimacy, help you feel a greater sense of stability as well. And if you are open to meeting somebody new, this can be a time uh, when there should be at least somebody there to help you understand yourself and who you are in love and who you are in terms of your availability, your true availability, because this week is gonna show you if there are any barriers within you to love and how it is that you can go about actually resolving them. And so it isn't just that, you know, you sort of have an attraction and, and you're not sure, but rather there's an attraction, there's a lot of promise there. It could be more, it could manifest as even more, but in the process you come to learn about yourself and what you really want and love, and you're making some really smart, really stable choices in the process as well. Hello, fabulous Libra. This week we have got your ruling planet, Venus, moving into a part of the sky for you that is financial, decidedly financial. And at the same time, what we have is an eclipse. And this eclipse is happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with work, okay? So we've got work energy taking place here. We've got money energy taking place here. You put this together and it does indicate that there, you are going to be busy, I got to say. You are going to be busy this week. Uh, this is a time when you could attract an amazing client if you're self-employed, a time when you're likely to see workplace changes take place as well, okay? So workplace changes are a possibility taking place now, um, and they may be very quick. It looks like you end up on top. It looks like you know the right people, connected to the right people to move yourself towards a more stable situation, financial and otherwise. It just looks like you need to have a conversation. So you may need to actually state what it is that you want as things are changing around you. However, um, it does look like there are changes possible and um, someone new may be entering rather suddenly. And it's possible that this person is a female as well in your work sphere. 
and ultimately, as I said, it seems to work very much to your advantage. Also really important for you is the fact that we are having the last exact square between Uranus and Pluto. The last exact conversation is taking place between these two planets. And with this conversation, uh, we should see after this, look, you still have Uranus in your opposite sign, okay? So it's not completely smooth sailing just yet, but at least in matters of love and matters of partnership, some of the tension should start to ease. It should start to feel after this week that questions you've had, concerns, fears that you've had start to subside as well. And so this to me suggests that the most commitment phobic uh, Libras out there now are going to start moving into a space where they're able to more and more like they've confronted their fears, uh, they confronted that part of them that's been resistant. Now they'll be able to slowly but surely leave that behind more and more, enter smoother waters. Now, smoother, it's a relative term because yes, the pressure will be off thanks to Pluto moving on, but Uranus will still be there. So you're still learning a lot. There's still going to be activity in the realm of love. But at least now you get to be really honest with yourself about what has been, what you've been afraid of, why you were in the situations you were before, and how now you're ready to grow beyond what was towards a more authentic love. Hello, fabulous Scorpio. This week we have got this wonderful eclipse taking place in a part of the sky that has to do with the romance. It has to do with the flutter that love provides. It has to do with the feeling that um, really, it has to do with that feeling, that butterflies in the stomach, that feeling of being swept off your feet. And when I see something like that happening in the sky, for you, it does suggest that that very chance may show up, the chance to have fun, the chance to get swept up off your feet. Now, if you're dating somebody, this is really a really great phenomenon to take place. You're all of a sudden seeing them more clearly, and you are making a choice for your life now and in the future as to what role this person is going to play. So it looks like especially if you're dating somebody, things seem to evolve in a way that's fun, that's light, that feels good, and feels right to you as well. Those of you who are not really thinking so much about romance, um, this is a very creative vibe. It's a very uh, fertile vibe as well. So um, I will say this, the creativity part, this could be the launch of a new creative project that really fills you with a lot of hope and a lot of inspiration and that you can see right away is going to create positive and tangible results in your life. Positive progress, stable progress in your life, especially the financial kind at that. For those of you who are wanting to have children, are open to having children, this is a really great week to have that sort of surprise you, to have a pregnancy take place if that is something that you are uh, looking for. Uh, and for those of you right now who aren't really thinking about kids or creative projects, um, may or may not have somebody there in your life, at the very least, there's going to be flirting. <laughs> there, you will be getting your flirt on uh, under this, although you will be playing it a little bit conservative. It does look like the opportunity to enjoy your life, to have some fun, and to feel a sense of joy and feel a sense of being engaged with life certainly will be there. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. This week we have got this eclipse happening at the very base of your sky, so at the very bottom of your sky. And this is really such an important place to experience a celestial phenomenon like this, like an eclipse, because it does suggest that you are coming to understand what home is for you differently. You're coming to understand your foundation uh, that you have that allows you to do all the things you desire to do. And it has to do with feeling at home within your own body, within your own skin, but also your actual physical home as well. And so when I see a sky like this, it does suggest to me that changes on the home front are very likely now. Um, for those of you who are looking to change homes because of a growing family, because of uh, your children, your children's needs, um, that seems especially, uh, especially blessed right about now if that's your motivation or if your motivation is that you want to change your space so that you can have space uh, like a room of one's own, right? Like uh, Virginia Woolf said, you have your own space to create. 
and whatever it is that you like to work on, whatever your creative projects are, uh, writing fiction or otherwise, um, to have that space that allows you to create um, may also be a motivation as well uh, for some people out there. So this is a time when there's a, a very deepening of an appreciation of how you are better, stronger, more aware, thanks to um, the foundation you hold, thanks to how you understand yourself and your ability to care for you in a very fundamental way, in a very deep way at that. And I do think that these changes happening on the home front are actually speaking right to the heart of you in some important ways. Remember, Saturn is now in your sign. You are in an extended process of growing up. You are growing up. And this is going to allow you to come to a new level of self-respect that you just haven't known before or if haven't known for a very, very long time. And this will allow you a sense of understanding that what you put in is what you get out. And sometimes what you put in is determined a lot by what you believe you can based on what you've done, based on the foundation you've already created. So if there is a situation where you feel you haven't put the things in place to actually do what it is you desire so you can reap what it is you desire, this is going to be an opportunity for you to get honest with yourself in that regard so that you can move your life in a direction that feels right for you. Also, I do want to say Venus moves into a part of the sky that has to do with health. This can be a time when you get really indulgent. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, indulge responsibly, whatever it is that you enjoy. Uh, do do that responsibly and you will find the right balance for you. Um, I do think that life, I think that this is something those of your sign understand. Life is ultimately, life can be long, um, but it's also short. This is part of the lesson of Saturn in your sign. And while Saturn may be saying, you know, hold back, think big picture, life is long, but it's short. Um, at the same time, there's going to be a part of you that's just going to be feeling like, you know what, I want to taste everything. I want to enjoy this experience of being incarnated of my five senses. Uh, if you want to go on a wine tasting cruise or whatever it is. Um, of course, it's always up to you to decide how you're going to make that work for yourself. But I got to say, and as I said in the introduction, considering that next week we've got these really lovely vibes taking place in the sky between Venus and Pluto, it does suggest to me that it's not necessarily about finding the right balance, but actually if there's any kind of anything that's actually going to be good for the body, it is going to be a sense of allowing yourself that pleasure that maybe sometimes you don't allow. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. This week we have got the last of this series of conversations that's been happening between Pluto in your sign and Uranus. And I do think that a lot of Capricorns out there have been really brave, um, have in some way faced themselves in a way that's been not only brave, but searingly honest. And this is now going to give you the chance to allow you to evolve and understand how now slowly but surely you've been made better. You know, I think about uh, this, you know, sort of phrase that a lot of people say, they say pressure creates diamonds, pressure creates diamonds. And so you can't be a diamond. You can't have that thing within you that is beautiful and strong unless you allow yourself to go through a process of challenge. And that really is what this conversation has come down to. Now, you're still going to have Pluto in your sign really right into the next decade, into the middle of next decade. So it isn't that, you know, all of a sudden, boom, magic wand, it's all over. But, you know, any tension, any strife, any challenge is over. But at least now you will have an ability to take some of the pressure off of yourself so that you can enjoy the process as you continue to move your life forward. So you'll be able to enjoy yourself a little bit more, embrace who you are a little bit more, feel motivated by something other than just, um, just feeling like if you don't do something, it isn't going to get done and being really hard on yourself, being critical of yourself and feeling a sense of urgency that part of you will relax. Those of you born right in the middle of your sign, right around the fifth, give or take three days on either side, are going to be experiencing this most. It is going to be an especially important week, but all Capricornians out there should be uh, noticing an important difference. 
You add to this the fact that we've got this eclipse happening in a part of the sky that has to do with the right place at the right time and having the right conversation. And I do think that if there ever was a week to be social, to be out and about, to even just walk around your neighborhood more, this would be it. You're very likely to, to rub shoulders or bump into somebody um, who really has the potential to create a sense of you moving in a direction that you like. And however it is that you define success, however it is that you define achievement, you can now meet the right people and put yourself in the right circumstances that move you very positively in a direction that I do believe you will like very much. Hello, fabulous Aquarius. This week we've got an eclipse happening in a part of the sky for you that is financial, decidedly financial. And this has to do with money you earn. This has to do with your salary. This has to do with your income. And when there is an eclipse, and especially a new moon eclipse, um, and especially one that immediately changes signs to one that is harmonious to yours and speaks in supreme harmony with Saturn. Well, it does suggest a new financial opportunity. I do think that it's been a while coming, but a part of you will feel like, wow, this sort of came out of nowhere. But I think you will be very ready for it. You will be ready for this financial opportunity. And that in some way, it will allow you to bring forward, to share, to communicate more of the things that you like within yourself, but also it's going to not just be that, okay, great, I'm making more money, but that it will allow you to create greater financial opportunity for yourself for a foreseeable time to come. So there's something steady, something secure, something that speaks to a sense of achievement and accomplishment all sort of rolled in to this eclipse. I do think that this is going to be an important moment for you in terms of you understanding your success, what success means to you, especially in financial terms, what's enough money for you and what isn't. Where is it that you've put limits on the amount of money that you're earning and why? It's also a really great at time to have really great ideas that do create prosperity for you for a very long time to come. And this is a time to trust yourself. Trust yourself that you have something within you. Your intuition can lead you towards greater abundance because very likely the opportunity that comes now is going to be quick. The inspiration that comes now will just sort of hit you and you'll be like, okay, what are you going to do with this? Are you going to do, are you going to talk about this? Are you going to share this? Are you going to follow this up? Are you going to at least have a conversation with somebody so that this can manifest as soon as possible? All of that uh, comes with this particular, uh, particular week. It really is a very positive time. You add to this the fact that Pluto will make its last exact square with your ruling planet, Uranus. And it does suggest that wherever there's been some unconscious fear, wherever there's been sort of a, a pressure or any kind of energy that's felt a little bit draining, that's felt a little bit down, you will now start to move beyond that. You'll be able to now bring the best of having Uranus in the part of the sky that has to do with mind. You'll be able to that much easier bring the best of those qualities forward. Hello, fabulous Pisces. What an amazing week for you. You've got an eclipse in your sign. You've got Mercury in your sign. Mercury speaking with Saturn, meeting Neptune in your sign. And it just adds up to a shift in the way you see yourself, in the way you understand yourself, your perception of you, and a shift in identity at that as well. And so there is something within you that is adjusting now. There is something within you, the way you understand yourself matters close to heart, matters that are most important, that take a big turn now very much for the better. You are making a choice. You are making a decision. And you are deciding and you're saying to yourself, to the universe, this is who I am. This is who I am. And it's very likely that some experience is going to show up that is going to ask you to do just that. And it may actually surprise you to realize that you are not who you were. And sometimes, I got to say, sometimes this happens in our sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one interactions. We see something about who we were in other people and where we've been hanging on to an identity that no longer works for us, is no longer who we are, where we've been holding on to that. We finally admit to ourselves that that has served its purpose, that we're ready to let that go. And what I really like about this week is the level of self-honesty you are bringing. 
You are bringing a level of self-honesty, a level of self-worth, and a level of self-knowledge to the changes that now are being asked of you. When I see a sky like this, I gotta say, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have seen people go through dramatic changes under a sky like this. I mean, like, vegans start eating meat, meat eaters go vegan, people quit doing drugs, um, all kinds of amazing things. People just come to understand that they have been participating in something that is no longer an authentic expression of what it is that they most desire to do and who it is that they understand themselves to be. And so allow yourself to change, be open to that because it's by hanging on to something that ultimately is gonna get in the way of a flow of an energy that is leading you to be the best of you and that is leading you to be a more honest version of you, a version that I think that you will like and that also you will respect very much. I will stop there. Thank you so much to all signs out there and happy International Astrology Day. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.